perfect. So welcome to our yin yoga session this Sunday. Um, it's such a privilege and pleasure uh, to share yoga with you and um, meditation and hopefully we'll all be resonating with very calm um, and chilled vibes by the end of this. Um, and yes, yeah, so welcome. I, if you didn't hear um, a few minutes ago, if you've just joined, uh, for our session today, we're going to be using chairs um, as, in, as a prop. Um, so you're just going to need a standard like dining room or sitting chair like I've got here. Super simple, just wooden chair. Um, and I've thrown a blanket over it to make it softer around the edges. And as it's yin yoga, remember, as many soft cushions, uh, blankets, socks, nice, warm, supportive things, the more the better for that. Um, the more options you have when we get into the poses to make sure that you feel super super comfortable so um make sure you have those in your in your room around you and our theme for this week has been compassion and we've been using um vinyasa flows to uh focus on the uh, manipura chakra our chakra over the uh, solar plexus which is our point from which we give and take power and energy in the world uh, it's our our energy center our engine um and and indeed it's where we manage our ego and our power relations so it's a very good point from which to focus on how we are able to give more than we take and how we're able to care for people other people and and there's obviously lots of interesting considerations around that now because we're removed from each other and the people, normal people that we care about and interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, we're now removed from them. A lot of us in isolation, in quarantine, um, and feeling quite dislocated from our normal modes of interaction and in fact even touch um, and ways of showing that we care and have compassion. Uh, so our yoga practice over this week has been a way to connect with what compassion means to us and use the body to channel that energy and heighten that energy and then to still share it and feel it in our bodies um, in spite of feeling dislocated um, and removed. So our practice this evening um, will be the last of obviously the three compassion flows this, this week. And um, we're going to be focusing on the heart for this. Um, in a Chinese philosophy, um, the heart is the center of the shen or spirit. Um, and that's when we talk about feelings of, of compassion and those high vibrations of feelings, that's where they emanate from. So lots of lovely heart openers and hopefully um, yeah, very relieving for the back. Um, so let's begin. And we're going to begin in a balasana su supported child pose. So if you come onto your mat um, and have your cushion or bolster in front of you. Um, so I've got it but sort of between my legs. You could have two cushions here and you want to have your knees just on either side and then have your legs close in on either side of that cushion as you lean forward over it and bring your hands over the edge. And you um, or if the cushion is a bit shorter and um, you want to have your head on a block um, or another cushion just to place something on your, on your forehead on, that also works really well. So however you arrange the cushion beneath you and over your head and face, I invite you to To throw a blanket over your back if it's cold where you are. It's becoming winter here in South Africa, um, unseasonably cool autumnal weather. It's quite nice to feel that warm support and comfort of a blanket over you. And as you lie down in your child pose, I invite you to close your eyes.
inspiration and exhalation as it falls naturally, as it is. And don't try and force or extend or control the breath. Just fo follow your essential rhythm. Feeling with each inhalation and exhalation that you were drawn deeper into your state of relaxation, drawn deeper into your awareness of the present moment. And feel the soft support of the cushions beneath you. Hug this in towards your body. And as you make this small and safe and tight shape in your balasana, your child pose, an essential pose, closed in, closed away from the world and supported on the floor. So this allows us to turn our attention inwards. It reminds us to turn our attention inwards. And I see to the inner world, the space and the peace in here. Very comfortable for the of the snow. Unraveling the coil of the body. And it is in these places, in these times, we were able to retreat inwards and be safe in time for a day and feel completely relaxed in these spaces where we have time to retreat. We focus on the more suffering parts of our minds and bodies. But again, it often we are able to connect with our hearts. Nina, I'm struggling yes. to hear you when I'm struggling to hear you when your earbud touches the pillow. It's almost like it's muffling your voice. I'm not sure if others are struggling with that. Thank you so much, Bridget. So if we're all on apologies for that, and thank you so much. So if we're all in our child pose, in our balasana, just connecting with the heart in this quiet and soft space. Entering into our practice with care. And I invite you here to imagine yourself as not just a capsule, but as a seed. So a little seed balanced on the soil. And as you close your eyes and turn inwards, I invite you to feel the sensation of perhaps being buried down into the soil, being covered by the nourishing soil, and being supported and cloaked in this environment. And this darkness, this environment, in which we are covered and submerged is the necessary beginning for our growth. So as you as little seed are burying down into the soil in your capsule, and we are connecting with the heart center, and eyes are closed, face is soft, breath is subtle and rhythmical, I invite you here to imagine yourself slowly starting to grow. So as we stay exactly where we are physically, perhaps the heart center starting to expand through the chest as the shoot from the seed starts to expand 
through the veins of the body and taking over the internal organs, perhaps reaching back from the heart through the back, running along the spine, up into the head, over the scalp, and perhaps starting to shoot out of the body, out through the soles of the feet, out through the palms, which are faced upwards on either side of the body. And so connecting with the heart center and the breath in this moment of relaxation, the seed is growing and expanding out and up through the soil. And as we turn inwards in silence and contemplation, we allow ourselves to expand through the heart center in other ways, growing and reaching. And in our last few breaths here in the Balasana, I invite you to draw the imaginative shoots and roots that you've grown out of the body back in, feeling with each inhalation that they retreat back into your body, little bit by little, drawing back through the hands and the feet, through the skin, through the back, retreating with each inhalation and finding their way back into the heart and the seed planted here. And let us remain aware of the seed throughout our practice today, throughout our heart openers, throughout our yin session. Safe and still and ready to expand in the fertile soil and the time is right. And I invite you to gently find your way up to a seated position. And we'll come into the Varasana seat. So you're just going to take that cushion and place it underneath your bum. And bring your hands into the seat of the body first, just to straighten the spine, drawing the shoulders back, lifting through the top of the head. Incidentally, if this hurts your knees and you want to place your legs forward in a Sukhasana seat, normal cross-legged seat, that's also fine if this is too much for your knees. And then bringing your right hand over your heart and your left hand over the lower belly, just below the belly button. You feel the contact of palm to torso here. Feel the touch of your hand to body. And sitting up straight here, still focusing on that flow of a central breath and being aware of ourselves in space. We now tune in and focus in on that touch of hands, of palms to body. And feeling the loving touch of your hand over your heart. And feeling the loving support of your left hand over your lower belly. Our stomach is like our second heart incredibly complex area full of nerve endings incredibly linked to emotions and reactive emotive responses and so we hold both of these centers of feeling and heart within our hands On your next exhalation, releasing your hands from the torso. And now we're going to move back into the Sukta Baddha Varasana. So I'll demonstrate this first. And if this is going to be too much for your knees, I'll give you an alternative. So come to sit really on the front of your long cushion, or if you don't have a long cushion, then two cushions stacked one behind each other. And sit right on the edge of it and have your Varasana knees and your legs ar arranged like that. And then slowly lie back. Make sure that your neck is in still in some way supported. 
So with a slightly longer hold in the yin, you don't want to have, have a very tired and sore neck by the end. So have something underneath the head. And then you can bring your hands onto the side of the rib cage, palms facing downwards. And just connecting with the breath. You can close your eyes when you have the pose. If this is too much for your knees, we do very something very similar. We'll just do the Supta Baddha Konasana, uh, which is to have the soles of the feet together, knees playing outwards, something soft underneath each thigh, and then lying back. So that's the option if your knees give you a bit of trouble or you have previous injuries and you're concerned about them. Either one hands are on the side of the rib cage and breathing steady, automated. Allowing the brain here to feel soft. So allow for the brain matter to relax. The whole of the nervous system receiving the transmissions to relax. Let your face and the skin over your face feel soft melting down towards the floor on either side of you. And so compassion is our sensitivity to suffering, our value of justice and our awareness of interdependence. It is a motivating, caring, and sense of interdependence for others. And it leads us to take action to alleviate emotional, mental, or physical pain or suffering in others. Compassion requires of us sound judgment. It requires of us mindfulness and attention to detail, and sensitivity, and tuning in not just to ourselves, but to those around us. And then lastly, it requires a passion or a will, a sense of will, to want to make changes and alleviate the suffering. And in this sense, it is quite different to sympathy, which is passive. Sympathy is related to feelings of pity. It is a type of caring, but it is a passive caring from a distance. And compassion instead responds with warmth and with action. Indeed, the etymology of the word it has a Latin root and it means co-suffering. It is the necessary precursor to empathy, which is feeling as another. Empathy is different in the sense that it doesn't require of us action. That's why compassion is such an important and interesting feeling and concept to contemplate. It's that passion, the action is so important. Taking a last three breaths here in our Supta Baddha Varasana. Perhaps you want to lengthen these breaths and feel the expansion, full expansion and contraction of the belly and the rib cage in the work of the diaphragm. And then on your last inhalation, you can stretch your arms up above your head, reaching along the floor away from your head. And then exhale to release bringing your hands alongside the body, elbows alongside the body as you inhale to sit up and come up onto your knees. If your cushion is, is very much in the way, you're gonna move it a little bit out of the way, just to the side of the mat, near to the front. We're gonna use it again in a moment. And from here, come up onto your knees 
and we're going to expand the front of the chest and warm up our spine and chest a little bit. So draw your hand, right hand, to your right um, ankle and engage your glutes gently as you push your chest forward and soften your neck. Inhale. On the exhalation, you're going to wheel your hands forward and make this movement full and expansive as you stretch as far as you can into the fingertips. And then inhale to open up left hand to left heel. We can stay here. So we're moving slowly with the in. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale to close the body, reaching forwards. Nice, full, expansive movement. Inhale on the right side. This time we'll move exactly with the breath. So exhale to close. And indeed, if your breath is shorter or longer than mine and you're starting to find your own rhythm here, that's perfect. Inhale to open on the left, exhale to close and reach. You can just flow with your own breath and rhythm here, inhaling to open, exhaling to close. Just doing a few rotations, maybe closing your eyes if you've got your balance and feeling that full matching of movement and breath doing one more on each side. And then exhale, come back towards the center when you're ready, bringing yourself into a neutral spine, into your tabletop. So stacking your joints up, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And as they're so good, when you're doing heart openers, let's do a few cat cows. So inhale to arch and exhale to round. So again, follow your breath and your rhythm. Finding the symmetry of breath and movement. And just tune into your spine. Finding that conversation between spine and body maybe rotating into the hips and the shoulders a little bit with your cat cow. Maybe your neck is stiff and you're rotating into the neck and stretching into the side of the neck with this movement as well. And feel as though you pour the floor away. And you can push and pull with your hands. Let's do three more cycles of breath in your time. I'm just warming up the spine here. And then bringing your spine back to neutral when you're ready. And on your next inhalation, take your right leg forward and place it between your hands softening into the back left knee and foot and then place your hands on either side of that front right foot and keep your hands there i've domed up the hands um, into kind of like spider fingers to give myself some more height if the floor feels very far away and it's too much for you to find the floor then of course place props underneath your hands to bridge that gap and you're going to look down towards your foot and just lengthen the back of the neck We'll just take a few lovely deep breaths here and focus in, tune into your hips. So feel with each exhalation that you relax more deeply into the hips. So hip openers, and indeed we are doing these hip openers to um, help alleviate any tension in the lower spine. So a good combination with heart openers and back bends. And all of these movements are often very much related with our fear, our relationship with ourselves and our sense of fear and how familiar we are with our bodies, how much we trust our bodies and indeed how much we perhaps trust others. So just connecting with your sense of trust and knowing to your body, knowing what is right and good and healthy, what is your edge. And 
last few breaths here. On your next inhalation, just reaching, lifting up your right hand and we're gonna focus on the left side. So you're gonna take a cushion and place it on the inside of that right foot. So I've got it right on the inside here. And then I'm gonna lower my elbows down onto that cushion. And now really let that right knee splay open and completely and make that whole of the right hip totally passive. In fact, my right foot is now rotating over onto the outside of the foot. So it's not, the sole of the foot is no longer flat on the floor. And that's how relaxed and open the hip is. And then you can either come onto your elbows here. And of course, the higher the cushions, um, the easier it is and the less of a strain it is for you. And so you can either stay on your elbows and you can kind of cradle or support your head with your hands or, and I'm just going to do this once, hopefully the sound doesn't leave us, you can lie on your left side and completely support your left side of your head, cradling it in the upper arm, left upper arm, and close your eyes. So this all depends on how open your hips are and how much height you have um, in terms of cushions and blankets underneath you. This all depends how far down you'll go. But regardless, you want to make sure that your head is supported. And we're continuing to breathe into the hip. And so it's often written and, and spoken about in terms of compassion for others. We often talk about our self-compassion is linked to this. And an important aspect of our ability to feel for others, to be sensitive towards others, and then to act on that. And our self-compassion, our ability to do that for ourselves, is very much linked. But of course, it's not a necessary precursor. Often these develop together. So the more you open and care for others and act upon that, sometimes the more capacity you have for yourself. And you build the two as they build off each other. On your next inhalation, lifting your chest up, coming out of that pose. And we're just gonna sit up a little bit now, so a little bit higher on the hips, and bring your hands into fists and place the fists into the small of the back as you open up your heart now, leading from the solar plexus, rolling the shoulders back and down and pushing your elbows behind you. A few deep breaths here. So just pressing into your lower spine, activating the energy meridians there and also signaling a sense of openness and lengthening in the, lengthening in the lumbar spine. Last breath here, inhale, and then exhale. And from here, we can straighten that front leg and just softly lean over the right leg. So this is called the Ardha Hanumasana, and we have a passive version of it today. So you can, if the floor is far away, of course, you can use a cushion to place your hands on, and you can soften into that right leg and feel the full support of your left knee and the top part of your left foot. Look down towards the floor and don't worry about a perfectly straight spine. Allow the spine to round a little bit here. Allow it to fall as is natural to you and your body. And so this is like a gentle opening in the back, in the back of the upper part of the hamstrings and in the glutes. All of this is part of our back bends or necessary for healthy, and full back bends. And last two breaths here. In your next inhalation, rolling over that front foot and perhaps moving the cushion out the way if you need space to place your hands to the floor and just stepping back then back 
into your tabletop. Just align the hips, stack the joints up once again. Let's go through two cat cows. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, bringing the left leg forward now, placing it between your hands and keeping your hands on the floor on either side of that front foot as you dome the heel of the hand up or place your hands on cushions or blocks and then really soften into the hips. And if you feel tight around the hips here, you can also press the top of your right foot into the floor and then just lift up the right knee and wiggle that foot back a little bit, making just that bit more space. For yourself to open here and then let your belly be soft let it fall naturally on the inside of that left thigh look down to the floor look down towards your left toes just following the full expanse of the breath And so our compassion is our recognition that the inner wars or troubles and suffering of others, that everything that they are experiencing is shared. So our compassion is dependent upon us seeing that all suffering in any living being is part of our total suffering. And as Martin Luther King once said that whatever affects one directly affects all of us indirectly. And he wrote a lot about compassion and he termed it the inescapable network of mutuality. In your next inhalation, lifting up your left hand and placing the cushion on the inside of the left foot and just making some soft support on the inside of the left foot bringing your right elbow first then the left on the inside of your left leg so this is like a super passive half lizard and then you can either fold fully into the pose onto your right side if that's accessible for you and your hip or you're staying up a little bit hands or, or, or elbows on a cushion and indeed if you don't if you're not lying on the floor remember to cradle your head so a nice practice is to take your thumbs and just place them on either side of the top inner groove of your eye socket and the skull so there's a nice little soft inner groove just below the third eye um, and you just uh, place your thumbs in there and it's a nice way to cradle the head And so our ability to feel compassion is our ability to recognize the common human experience. It's our ability to recognize commonality. It's our ability to recognize difference and still be able to embrace that. And this is part of why compassion is such a central part of Buddhist philosophy is because of the underpinning theory of non-dualism which means that there is and simply put there is no separation between mind and matter there's no separation in the universe between any elements of life and so suffering in any one element is a suffering for us all on your next inhalation lifting up out of the pose just coming into a little less um extensive hip opener so 
sitting up a little bit higher here and making fists with your hands and then pressing those fists into the lower spine. And as you do that, press the chest forward and imagine as though there's like a magnetic force between the elbows as the elbows press backwards and down and in. Just a few breaths here. Let the glutes and the belly be soft. Last breath, inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to straighten that left leg, bringing your hands on a support if you need them, if you need the height, as you straighten the left leg. And then soften into the back, into the patella, into the kneecap, and soften into the back of the hamstrings and the back of the knee. And allow the spine to round a little bit naturally and look down towards the floor. Connecting with the breath. Of course, if you're supple and you're going down onto your elbows here, that's also fine. So don't be limited if you have that range. If you are more supple in the hamstring and you're folding down, you can cradle your chin on your knee or on your shin. And so given this interconnectedness, this inescapable network of mutuality, compassion is our most powerful mechanism for moving beyond us versus them. So moving beyond difference. Our compassion in times of divisiveness and conflict is our most powerful tool in transformation, in changing the circumstance and moving beyond it. Last breath here, inhale and exhale. Inhale to lift up and bring your weight forward again. Move the cushion out and you can place your hands to the floor stepping back. And we're gonna set up now with our chair. So we're gonna get into a Viparita Karani with the chair. So if you all just take your chair and you can place it at the back of the mat with the back of the chair facing away from you and the seat of the chair facing towards you. Make sure you've got that soft edge cushion um, and then you're going to take your big cushion or your two or three smaller cushions and place them lengthways just in front of the chair. So you're really, really, really setting setting the stage here for, for relaxation. Then once you've done that, you're gonna step forward and then sit down on the front of that cushion and make a little bit of space in the chest, leaning back. And when you're ready, lift your legs up onto the chair. And so you'll see there's a little bit of space here between my cushion and the edge of the chair. It's not flush up against. It. So we'll get to that. The first stage for the Viparita Karani is to have just that bit of space. And then you come right to the edge of your cushion and you're gonna lie back, make sure the head is comfortable and supported, not straining the neck. And then if it's comfortable for you, you can place your ankles or the back of the heels on the top of the chair. So you'll just have to play around. It all depends on the size of your chair, the length of your legs, and so you should generally just about have the front edge of the chair at the top of your hamstrings and then your heels on the top of the chair. If your legs are a little shorter or the chair is particularly long, you can perhaps balance your feet somewhere lower down on the back of the chair. And then you can place your arms up alongside your face as if to frame your face, like make, making your arms into cactus arms like a cactus shape, like a box shape, uh, palms facing up towards the ceiling. 
and you can close your eyes here. So Viparita Karani is always a very accessible relaxation pose. It is an inversion and yet it helps us to open through the chest, helps us to open through the heart and it is very relaxing. So it does the work of inversions, which is to reboot the circulatory system and allow lymph drainage down the leg, giving our heart rest and sort of boosting our natural system of detoxification in the body. Inversions are incredibly beneficial. And this is the safe inversion, the inversion you can do at any time of the day. Inversion you can do no matter what health state you're in or fitness or age. And I found a quote when contemplating compassion and what to share about that. I found a quote written by Einstein in a letter that he wrote to a friend of his who had recently lost his son. And he wrote, a human being is part of a whole called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. She or he experiences herself, her thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest. This is a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is a prison for us humans. It restricts us to our personal desires and to affection to a few nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening circles of compassion, to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Taking our last few breaths here in the Viparita Karani. And perhaps you want to take in full intercostal diaphragmatic breathing through this. So really fill up the belly and drink in the oxygen and expand the lung capacity through this. And then opening your eyes and bringing your hands alongside the body. Do you come up onto your elbows enough so that you can see me? And we're going to move from here into what's known as a um, supported shoulder stand. So it's really safe. You're going to move your chair a little closer to your cushion. So now it is kind of flush to the cushion. And then you're going to hold on to the legs of your chair because you don't want your chair obviously to slide away from you. And our yoga mats help in that a bit because they're pretty sticky. And then you're going to lie back on your cushion and you're going to place your feet on the top of your chair. So even if you're just on your heels, that's okay. Um, if you're quite tight over the front of the shins and ankles, even if you're on your heels, that's fine. And you're going to inhale and press your hands into the legs of the chair. So this chair is nice and stable and lift your bum up. And then you're just gonna wiggle a little bit to get a bit closer towards the edge of the chair. So the main wiggling that I had to do was to get your bum to the edge of the chair. So you, you're just gonna have to play around a little bit just to get the bum onto the edge of the chair. And the minute you've done that, your feel, so your neck and the top of your um, shoulders are supported by the cushion. And as soon as you've got your bum over that, that and on that edge of that lip of the chair, which is covered with a blanket, so it's soft, you can then relax your legs 
over the top of the chair. So your feet are reaching up towards the ceiling and you're feeling a nice press into the back of the calf on the edge of the chair. And you're also feeling a pressure into your uh, base chakra, your muladhara chakra, and the base of the spine. And there is a collection of shen or spirit meridians at the base of the spine. So we're also activating those in keeping with our yin and Chinese herbal medicine intentions for our practice today. And then you can place your elbows on the floor or on the cushion and continue to hold onto the legs of the chair and maybe press the upper arms and elbows down, holding onto the chair, and that should help you open over the chest a little bit more. Remember when you're here to relax your jaw and your face. Remember you don't have to strain to hold this pose. So although we're inverted and there's indeed a gentle back bend, you have the chair and the anatomy of your shoulders to hold you here, the skeletal structure. You don't have to strain into muscles over the neck and shoulders to hold it. So trust yourself here, trust the chair, and try to consciously relax now into your shoulders, into your neck, into your face, into your belly. And indeed, as we are considering how we can widen our circle of caring, widen our circle of consciousness and awareness to include larger groups of people and experiences within our realm of sensitivity and compassion, it's worth noting that all living beings should be included in this circle. One of the highest forms of compassion is to feel a deep sense of sensitivity for all life, not just human life. And this is very closely linked to Ahimsa, a tenant of Hindu philosophy and written in the Vedas, which are our original scripts in yoga. And this is one of the niyamas or tenants to fulfilling life. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's uh, one of the niyamas which are not your tenants for fulfilling life, it's the observances to avoid, and one of them is violence, non-violence. So embodying that principle in your life is opening out your awareness, your heart, your scope, your circle of caring to all living things. Coming into the last few breaths here. And then on your next exhalation, bring your feet onto the seat of the chair. So your soles of your feet onto the seat of the chair. So now your knees are bent, reaching up towards the ceiling. And you have two options. The one is to open your feet out a little bit wider than hip width to the edge of the chair chair and then have your knees knocking against each other pressing against each other just for a few last few breaths second option a little bit more intense for the lower back is to come into your konasana leg so that's to bring the soles of the feet together and then let your knees splay outwards so it's a deep release in the lower back and the sciatic nerve but it is more intense for your lower back so just proceed with caution here so the back side of your feet, the outer part of your feet, if you're in the Konasana legs, should be against, should be grounded on the top of the chair. You should not have them elevated. And if this is too much, of course, the knees are touching and feet flat on the chair. Last few breaths. And on your next exhalation, you can bring the knees together, everybody, and then slowly roll off. So you'll literally slide off the edge of your chair, bringing your bum to the floor. And maybe you want to just scoot the chair a little bit back to give you 
some space as the bum comes to the edge of your cushion or cushions. And then you can draw your knees in towards your heart here. You can even place your heels on that front edge of the top of the chair as you draw your knees in towards your heart, holding onto each elbow and just gently press your knees in towards your heart and press the base of the spine back on the top part of the chair. Perhaps lengthen a little bit through the back of the neck. And perhaps one of the hardest aspects of opening our circle of caring and compassion is not just living beings, but indeed human beings that are bigoted, that are acting wrongfully, that are hurting us or we don't agree with. And the work in finding compassion for them and their story and their perspective is some of the hardest work in compassion. We feel compassion, so a caring and sensitivity and an, a mindfulness and a sense of passion for rightful action with regards to somebody who is bigoted or who we don't agree with. It takes a great deal of patience and a very open heart and a great sense of mindfulness. And there is no greater way to counter that bigotry than with compassion. And then exhale to release your legs and you can kind of just roll off to the side, bringing knees to the side and you're like in a fetal position and then press into the floor as you come up and we'll have to stand here. So the one thing with chair work is lots of getting up and <laughs> moving around. And now we're gonna take the chair and we're going to have it facing the side of the mat. So you're just gonna move it like that. And then you've still got your cushion exactly where it was to that one, say the back side of your mat. So leave the cushion where it was. We're gonna use that to place our heads on that. And then we've got the spine nice and open and we're nice and we're ready for this. So we're going to come into a supported Udva Dhanurasana, which is the supported upward bow. Um, and there's, because of the chair, we can proceed with this very carefully for the spine. So it's usually a very intense pose for the spine, but because of our chair, we can support the parts of our spine that we need to. So you're going to come to sit first on the edge of your mat away from where your cushion is. And then holding on to the back end of the chair, you're gonna slowly lie down. So your base of your spine is straight. And then you're gonna place your hands to the floor and you're gonna wiggle to bring your bum to the center. So you're still safe with your spine. And so then wiggle them a little bit further so that your coccyx is kind of on the edge of the chair now. And then slowly holding onto the chair, back part of the chair and the legs, let your head soften to the floor. Now, the higher the cushions or blankets are, the less of the, the spinal um, uh, tilt. So if you have to take care with your spine and you have previous spinal injuries and you don't want to go far down, you would build up more height with those cushions so you have less of a back bend. So the more open the spine, the lower and the less the cushions you can have. So everybody's gonna be slightly different here. And you wanna make sure that the edge of the um, chair is once again on that Muladhara Chakra, on that base of the spine, pressing in and massaging into that Shen energy center. And then you can release your arms and either hold onto the chair if you're um, care, taking care with, you, with the weight, if you need that sense of support, or you, if you're trusting the chair in your body and you feel stable, you can relax your arms, palms facing upwards and let the hands flop out as though you were in Shavasana in the corpse pose. And we'll just take a few breaths here. So we won't hold this for the full five minutes. It's intense for, for the spine. 
So just breathe through any sense of discomfort you may feel. And like the work we did with the hips in the front of the mat, with in terms of opening the hips, I invite you in the same way to now tune into your spine and let each exhalation be a signal to soften and relax and open further. And so compassion is a central aspect in all of the major global religions. It's quite fascinating how it weaves into central texts and philosophies globally. Last two breaths here. And exhale. In your next inhalation, you're going to get a firm grip on the legs of the chair or the back, um, uh, back of the chair. So wherever you can, firm grip. And then inhale to lift your head up. Coming onto the seat of the chair. And now before we do a forward fold, we're going to do a twist. So a forward fold immediately after a deep back bend is sometimes too much for the spine because when you go into the bend, it fills with spinal fluid um, and it needs about a minute for that spinal fluid to drain before you can do a bend in the other way. So we're gonna use the twist for that. So come to sit on your chair as, as you would normally. And we're gonna to twist to the left side first. So you're gonna to look towards your left placing your left arm over the top back part of that chair. And then you can take your right arm and sweep it across the body and hold towards the lower part of the back of that chair. So get firm grip and then twist around to look over your left shoulder. So the first option is to stay here with the feet flat on the floor. And this is um, a very accessible and conventional chair twist. If you want to go further, you feel that this is, um, you want to get more of a stretch out of this, you can lift up your left leg and take your right hand, place it on the outside of the left foot, and on the inhalation, straighten the left leg up, and then twist around and soften into the shoulder and soften into the leg. You can also use a strap or a t-shirt or something to strap over the foot and hold onto the strap here as we come into the last sort of 30 seconds or minute of this twist. So you can elevate the leg if you want to, or you can keep both feet on the floor. And so for example, in Christianity, compassion is spoken of in particular in Corinthians. And God is spoken of as the father of compassion. Compassion being a central part of a Christian disp disposition and, in, in, and of course in the character of and the value system of Jesus. And in Islam, the compassionate is a way to describe God Al-Rahim is the translation, and it's written in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. And this is the central part of the call to prayer and regular daily prayer and practice of in Islam. So Al-Rahim, meaning the compassionate, again, a central quality of God. Last breath here, inhale and exhale to release that left leg. If you had it elevated, coming towards the center and we'll twist to the other side. So your right arm over the top of the right back side of the chair, left arm on the lower part of the chair. First option, feet to the floor as you twist around and look over your right shoulder. 
second option is to lift up your right leg, taking your left arm on the outside of that leg, inhale to straighten it up and relax into the shoulders. Make sure that you aren't straining to hold this. If it is a strain, you can use a strap or a piece of fabric over that foot, or perhaps it's too much and you want to have your feet to the floor. And make sure your gaze is soft and your face is soft so you aren't straining to look over the shoulders in this twist. And feel the effect this has over the spine and feel the relief, the relieving effect twists have after back bends. So just be aware of the changing feelings in, spa, in the spine and in the muscles over the spine. In Judaism, God once again is known as the father of compassion and the desire to relieve suffering in others is of course written as a regular, sorry, is regularly written as a central part of Judaism and the path of a holy and fulfilling life. In Confucianism, Everyone poses, there's a, um, a very interesting um, uh, folk tale that is central to the idea around compassion. And that is of a father who watches their child playing near a well. And they write and speak about the feeling of the father as the child teeters towards the edge of the well. And that feeling of wanting to protect, to alleviate, to save, is a germ root in everyone, in everyone's spirit. And that germ root is compassion. In your next exhalation, release that foot. If you had it, come to face towards the front of your mat, to, uh, towards the side of your mat, the front of your chair, and then swivel to have either side of your um, chair, doesn't matter, back or, back or front of your mat, doesn't matter, because we're coming into our restorative forward bend now. I've chosen to face towards the front of my mat because this is where my cushion is. I've got my cushion between my feet and keeping the spine really soft. So allow your spine to round in already. Look in towards the belly button. And then slowly, vertebra by vertebra, as though you're like melting, ice cream melting on a hot afternoon, melt down through your legs towards your cushion. Allow the body to fall in the center of the legs. Let the knees splay outwards and bring your elbows on those cushions or blankets. And then relax your head and let your head hang down. Let your neck be soft. Let your scalp be soft. Feel the weight of gravity doing the work here. And although we've come into the static part of our pose, you can still imagine yourself melting. Melting down into the floor. Melting out, knees melting outwards and down. Tension melting and draining over the spine, over the back, over the back of the head and dripping down towards the floor. And then in Buddhism, compassion is an absolutely central part of Buddhist philosophy. And it's considered to be made possible by a combination of keen observation, accurate perception, and appropriate action. And so those are the three tenets of compassion in Buddhist philosophy. And you may know there's a very famous quote from the Dalai Lama, which is, if you want, if you want, um, happy, if you want to be happy, practice compassion. And if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. And in Buddhist philosophy, compassion is linked to another central tenet, which is loving kindness, or what's known as bodhicitta, which is like a big love, an expansive, unconditional, universal love.
And so an expression of bodhicitta or loving kindness is to wish for all beings to be happy. This is a central part of Buddhism. And compassion alongside that is the wish for all to be liberated from suffering. And so compassion and loving kindness, or big love, bodhicitta, stand hand in hand and support and fuse into one another. Last full breath here, inhale and exhale. Maybe let's actually take a relieving, a relieving breath here. So that is to breathe out through the mouth and breathe in through the nose. And when you breathe out through the mouth, make it an audible sigh. So let's do three of those together. Breathe in through the nose and sigh it out. Second one to breathe in through the nose and sigh it out. And third to breathe in through the nose And then inhale to lift the chest up, pressing into the floor as you come up now with a straight spine. And now we're gonna support the spine prone on the floor. So you're gonna stand up and just get your chair out the way, coming towards the end of our yin practice. Just moving that out the way. And then you've got your cushion on the floor and I'm going to place it lengthways or maybe you have two cushions one of the other lengthways towards the back of the mat and then I come to sit just in front of it we can just sit in our sukhasana seat maybe you want to sit on it if you your hips aren't open and you need that height before we recline back and just coming into our easy sitting pose or sukhasana seat Connecting again with right hand over heart and left hand over lower belly, just below the belly button. And you can spread your, your fingers and just feel a gentle loving press of the palms over your heart center and over the lower belly of your, your two emotive centers in the body, the belly and heart. And close your eyes, connecting with your breath here in our Sukhasana seat. Perhaps you want to roll the shoulders back and just lengthen slightly through the back of the neck. Try and help the spine to sit up straight without forcing or straining. And just feeling that loving touch of your hands. And enjoying the stillness here. And perhaps silence where you are and just leaning into these moments. These moments that allow our minds to become more subtle, our senses to become more sensitive, our hearts to be more receptive and our minds to be more communicative or in tune with our heart. In the stillness and silence, we open up the alleyways, the canals, the highways of communication within the body. We must work in self-compassion is part of essential and important part of our process of work and compassion for others. And universally a high and central aspect of human life.
And then lifting your hands up from the body, bringing palm to palm. We can just rub our hands together, make some friction between the palms and heat between them, really feel that friction. And build the heat in the hands. And then when you have got sufficient heat over the palms, place them over your eyes. So bring the heel of the palm in a loving touch into the socket of the eyes. You feel the gentle touch of your fingers on the top of your head. You feel the touch of eyelids to eyeballs and palms to eyelids. And then when you're ready, release your hands. We can come into our last pose, which is a supported fish. So straighten your legs out. Cushion is behind you. It's super simple. And you lie back on that cushion. So the important aspect is that you do have a cushion under your back and something particularly under the scapula and the top of the back, of, under the shoulders. And then make sure that your head is some way supported. So an active fish posture in our Hatha or Vinyasa yoga, we would be now bending the head back and stretching into the neck and opening the throat. So as this is passive, we want our necks to be supported and soft. And then you can bring your hands on the floor, palms down um, or up on either side of the body if that feels nice for you, or if you would like, you can bring your hands over your belly. You can just place your palms over your belly. So whatever feels natural for you. And relax into your legs, let the toes lay outwards, heels inwards. And close your eyes. And in Hinduism and in the Vedas, in our doctrines from which we draw and have developed yoga over time, compassion is a central virtue. And there are multiple sta states of this virtue. The three main ones are Daya, Karuna, and Anukampa. So Daya speaks to a ability to feel as the living experience within another person or thing. So it's quite similar to the English word of empathy. So it's a feeling as though within another being, being separate that we consider or experience to be separate from us, but it's a feeling as though part of that. The Karuna is a feeling for another and a, an ability or will to act on behalf of them and for them and rightful action. And so that's another aspect of compassion. And then Anukampa, the third of the three main states of compassion is a feeling, it's a very interesting concept, it's the feeling once having acted and lived in a state of compassion. So it's quite an abstract word and term and it's a feeling of having being, of having shown compassion, of having acted on our sense of caring and sensitivity and compassion. And this feeling, this vibration, and ultimately our feelings are energetic vibrations, is a very high vibration, a very high state of being, Anukampa. And interestingly, also within these doctrines, doctrines they distinguish between a compassion for somebody who is ignorant or has acted wrongfully and a compassion for somebody who is a victim or suffering in spite of their knowledge or in spite of acting rightfully. And there are those two separate distinctions. And then there is an umbrella, an absolute 
compassion, which is in a similar sense to bodhicitta, a permeating, expansive vibration that connects all experiences in time and living things. And this is almost like a noun of the verb or the experience of anukampa. And so from here, we can come into our final relaxation, into our Shavasana. So for some of you, you're super comfortable and perhaps you want to stay exactly where you are. That is the case. You're going to place your hands, palms facing upwards on either side of the body, away from the body. So remove your hands from the chest and open the feet a little bit wider, toes flopping outwards, heels flopping inwards. Perhaps this is not comfortable for you or perhaps you want to add a cushion under your knees. Um, or under the feet, perhaps you want to grab a blanket, a pair of socks, something warm. And if that is the case, then do so now. Finding your way back home. Shavasana always feels like a returning home. Our corpse pose. And so becoming comfortable on your mat, nice and warm and supported on the floor. I invite you to just move your lower jaw from left to right, so almost like you dislocate the jaw, just move it from left to right. And then take your tongue and run it on the outside of your teeth, top teeth and bottom teeth. And then on the inside of your teeth and over the roof of the mouth. And let this tongue settle. And let the jaw slacken. And our attention is very subtle now. Minds are focused and calm. And so I invite you to slide your attention back from the lips and the mouth up over the top lip to the area of skin below the nostrils and above the upper lip. And observe the flow of breath, the touch of atmosphere over the nostrils and the skin below the nostrils above the upper lip. Anchor your focus here for a few moments. And let this usher you into your deep relaxation. It's always useful to give the mind a little bit of context, a little starting point when entering into relaxation. And so focusing on sensation on the body as it arises in this way is a useful tool, a useful way of doing that. I'm fully aware of how subtle and monotonous and regular and soft the breath is. And returning our attention to the heart center now, observing and connecting in the mind's eye to the heart. And observing here once again our seed, our seed of compassion. The 
just observing that little seed. As you observe the heart center and the seed, I invite you to bring to mind somebody, some people, something, some creature that perhaps is going through a difficult time, perhaps is suffering, perhaps is in need of your compassion right now. And to bring this person or persons to mind. As you connect with your seed of compassion in your heart, as you bring the, this person or persons to mind, I invite you with the pulse of your breath and your heart to let the seed start to grow. Observing the roots and shoots emanating out from the seed and feeling compassion expanding from the heart and flooding through the chest along with that. With each inhalation, bring, breathing in more compassion and oxygen, helping the seed to grow. And with each exhalation, breathing out more compassion. Fanning the growth of your compassion with the breath and bringing to mind those that need your love and your compassion and your caring right now and letting that feeling flood your chest let it move through your body growing branches and leaves growing through your veins through the organs sprouting to flowers unstoppable growth in this fertile environment fed with oxygen and nutrients you have everything you need, all the capacity for immense compassion, unstoppable growth, unstoppable compassion. And so let your body be filled as the seed grows and continues to fill the body with leaves and branches and flowers and fruit. As your compassion grows, flooding every molecule of your physical body. And so powerful this is that it cannot be contained within you. The branches sprout out through the feet and the hands, through your scalp. A beautiful, expansive tree growing out of you. Roots from the underside of the body grounding down into the earth reaching down through history, through layers of human experience, connecting with the universalities, connecting with a common human experience and receiving transmissions, drawing those lessons and nutrients up again through the body and out through the fruits and the leaves and the branches. Unstoppable, expansive compassion. Now gently let those leaves and fruits and flowers and bee and roots start to retract back within you with each inhalation. A returning journey. And drawing this energy and feeling back within you with each inhalation. Retracting back from the earth. Up 
through the skin, through the veins, the muscles, the bones, retreating back through the head and the brain and the scalp, along the trachea, along the lungs, the rib cage, and back down into the heart, retreating back to that little seed. As the last little shoot retreats and the seed closes, nestled here, always here, contained within you. And gently run your thumbs over your fingertips. And perhaps rotate into your wrists. Perhaps rotate into your feet. And if it feels good for you, stretch your arms above your head, taking a deep breath in, lengthening the body. Lovely, long, luxurious inhalation, lovely stretch. And then in your own time, in a way that feels right and good for you, come up to a seated position facing forward. And just taking great care with the body and keeping that focus inwards, keeping your eyes closed. And I invite you to bring your hands now to Anjali Mudra in front of your heart, palm to palm. And I invite you to join me in the universal vibration of Um. Taking a deep breath in. Let us help and support each other to give back more than we take. Let us nourish and give to each other so that we can sit at a grand table together and spread out our ideas and our skills and our energy and our resources like a feast. Let us invite all beings to this feast. In gratitude to all our teachers, past, present, and future, and to our loved ones who could not be here with us this evening. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you all for joining. I hope that you're feeling good and um, the sound improved. <laughs> Thank you for, to Bridget for letting me know about that. And um, the, each week I choose a different uh, charity for us to donate to. If you would like to donate after the classes, it's totally optional and every bit, no matter how small, um, is appreciated. And the charity for this week is um, the Womanity Foundation. Um, they are a, non a global non-governmental organization that focuses on gender equality. Um, some of their main projects include um, coding and IT skills for um, girl childs in um, Afghanistan. They also have a um, positive um, or dis and disruptive media uh, project and initiative in the Middle East. And they also have uh, projects where they support resources, giving resources and logistical to support to community leaders, the female community leaders in India and Brazil. Um, they, they have numerous projects though. Those are the three ones that stood out to me. Um, the link to their website is on my website. I'm gonna add the link here as per usual. Um, also connect with me if you'd like to know more about that or get the link um, and you can just yeah, click on the donate button on the website. And thank you all so much for